to the recording in progress. Do I have to push? Got it. All right, I you got, got it. it. So I got it. It's official now. You know. Okay. There's no stop button or pause. All right. <laughs> um, so one of my life dreams has always been as an adult is to have an RV and just go. Uh huh. And that's the life you live, man. Pretty much. I mean, Pretty we much. have so tell me we have that. home base now, which which is very nice to, yeah. to have a home base to come back to. I was full time for a while uh on my in my own rv yeah and now we have consolidated uh we didn't need two mine was getting older anyway so yeah. it was but it, it's nice to have a home base now uh but yeah and and we don't uh i mean we're not traveling obviously not traveling full time but yeah it's it's incredible i mean it's it's just so convenient and uh and so i mean except for the price of gas it's right. a lovely way to travel yeah it, it slows you down a bit you know, but life uh, sometimes needs to be lived a little slower. It does. It does. So, yeah, we, we really enjoy it. Both of us uh, have a good time with it. And and it, we make it pretty easy and smooth. Yeah. So, yeah. so do you do you take a car with you or you want to? No, drive? we don't. We, we've thought about it. We've toyed with the idea. I towed a car with mine for a while. Now, mine was bigger. It was 38 feet plus the car you know, and the dolly and all that. And you're talking f over 40 feet. Yeah, almost. And yeah. trying to negotiate gas stations and parking lots. And nah, I just, I, I didn't like it at all. Yeah. So, and we do fine without it. We, we, we plan ahead. We, we do a lot of cooking before we go. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and, and, and just load the thing up with groceries. And I mean, but you still run out of stuff, even on the road. So we do, we do make a, a lot of trips to walk. A Wally World, as we call it, a Walmart, <laughs> right? And and end up boondocking there too. Yeah. Uh, so when we're traveling through through a town, yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. If not, we stay at rest stops uh, on the highway, and yeah. and and that it works out great. Or we we find wonderful places too to boondock. And yeah. so, yeah. How much do you think you're on the road a year? Uh, phew, let's see. We do. We do about, when we go out, we do about a month. So I'd say two months total all together. Yeah. And then there's short trips. We've got one coming up in Delaware to run down to, to for a concert. And we'll go down there for a couple of days. And I'm going to do some training while I'm down there, too, uh, nice. with a fellow that uh, came up here a couple of weeks ago and trained with me. And uh, uh, I'm going to go back down there for this concert. And uh, So we play and, and work at the same time. Yeah. But that's cool. It is. It yeah. is. It's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I just, I mean, there's something, you know, I, 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 I kid with people that if I could get everything I own into a vehicle, I, I would just be on the road and I'd get a PO box yeah. somewhere, you know, and it's like, <laughs> I'll just, and a cell phone now I can be anywhere. And yeah, you can. Yeah. You know, and, and if people are still working, you can easily work from the road now. And, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, mean you just go in and <laughs> grab a Wi, you know, grab a Wi-Fi anywhere. Yeah. And a lot of people now are going to Starlink. Uh, the Tesla thing. Uh, oh, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so it's it's bouncing off the satellite, and and I, I guess if if you were out there full time and your job and you were still yeah. working, uh, it would be worth the investment. Worth yeah. To, but we don't have any trouble. I mean, I've I've never even the times I've been on the road and taught classes, I'm working straight off my yeah. uh, cellular data, and I, I don't yeah. I have I've never had a problem with because yeah, most of the we, RV parks yeah. don't have good Wi-Fi. Really? Uh, they, they'll have Wi-Fi up near their clubhouse or their but main they, office, but it doesn't reach out into the park. Yeah, cool. Just, but yeah. As long as I can get a cell phone connection, and it, you're good. I'm good anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I've read that you owned a coffee shop, which is another one of my dreams. <laughs> let me that, correct. Let oh, me correct you. Okay, I stand corrected. Coffee house. Coffee house. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Big difference. <laughs> What's the difference between a coffee shop and a coffee house? Well, I'll tell you. Coffee shop is where you just walk in, walk get a in. cup of coffee, and a yeah. Danish shuttle or a bowl of bagel, and leave. You know, the coffee house was uh, a. It it came from the idea in, in England, and they were called penny universities. And for a for want of an education, a man could go in a coffee house, and I, probably just men at the time. And uh, the local uh, dignitaries would be there and, and professors or whatever. 
And for a penny, you could get a newspaper and you could get an education at the same time listening to these people have conversations. This would be in in England with with the biggest ones. And that's sort of what we copied the idea from. We had a a bookstore. We advertised it as Denver's only. This was in Denver, Colorado. Denver's only non-pornographic all-night bookstore. (laughs) So... Just make sure you put that in big letters yeah. on the side. Big letters. <laughs> and we had a live theater and uh, where we did we did plays and uh, local stuff, people that, that, that wrote their own. Yeah. You know, and that type of thing. And then jazz music, too. Uh, not not all the time, but quite often. Yeah. But the place was uh, uh, the first one I was in was uh, Muddy Waters of the Platte River Coffee House Incorporated. Right. And that's also in the Denver version of Trivia. Uh, what was the what was Muddy's real the full name of Muddy Waters Coffee House? So uh, that was it. <laughs> nice. But we uh, it it was fun. I, I was in it for about uh, about four years. Okay. The last four years it started in 1975. We closed it in 1985, and uh, because we got bought out by the the corporate giants. Giant. They, That's right. They squelched the little coffee house. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Turned it into a Starbucks. That's just a, well. A they they tried shop. to. They yeah. they 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 claimed that the new convention center in Denver was going to be put at Union Station, which yeah. was right below us. And uh, they so they bought the whole block, and they were going to develop it. Blah blah blah. You know all this stuff, and they kicked us out. And um, and we you know we we had a good clientele, and we said, well, fine, fix the building, let us come back. Well, you can come back, but you can only have one space at. 10 times the rent you, you would pay. Right. And we couldn't do it. We were poor because we didn't have alcohol and, uh, and you don't make a lot of money on soups, salads, sandwiches, yeah. uh, and uh, desserts and coffee. And yeah. that was it. But we had the, the Denver Chess Club met there, the Denver Go Club met there, uh, uh, Fathers for Equal Rights met there. Uh, we also we had a branch of the uh, AA met there. Yeah. And, you know, it gave those people a social outlet without alcohol being involved. Yeah. So it was a it was a Denver tradition. We opened another one uh, after that one closed, but I didn't stay in that one very long because the partnership didn't work. So. Yeah. But it was it was a fun place. It was uh, fond, fond memories of, of working there and being involved. Oh, you never knew what was going to take place. Right. I mean, you, you don't know who's going to walk in the door today. Yeah. Well, we did. A lot, a lot of theatrical people would come in and just start coming in and just start singing <laughs> in the place or do an, do a scene from the play act. they were yeah. working on. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you never know, you never knew what was going to happen from night to night. So that was a lot of fun. See, that's, I mean, the big, big dream of Earth and Cup is that, is to kind of get a place where we can have a coffee house and do a, awesome. reading, a reading place and sell yeah. soup and sandwiches you know some beverages and then have floor space to have you know open uh yoga Perfect. or tai chi or yeah. and then to have some meeting rooms i mean we've always i've always looked if i could get a, a like a a grocery store that closed yeah you know like that like a kroger's or a you know a piggly wiggly or something and that kind of and make it you could have a couple floors and meeting rooms yeah, yeah so yeah. that that would be cool there's a restaurant out in uh, Golden, Colorado, uh, which is a suburb of Denver. I think it's called Blue Sky. And they're an uh, 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 eclectic menu, uh, a lot of healthy food. But at, at, in the evening, they close. I don't think they're open for dinner. I forget. It doesn't matter. But they close in the evening, and they pull all the chairs back, and it becomes a yoga studio. Yeah. You know, so it, which is a, a cool idea. And they have really good food, too. And they did. I, I, I think they're still in business, but. Yeah. I thought that was that was a great idea to make yeah. use of the space because they didn't want to be a late night place, yeah. and so uh, yoga takes place there it in the evenings. There. Yeah, it builds community. You can come in, you can get absolutely, something. and then you stay for yoga. And you know, we've had we've done it in restaurants before, tai chi and stuff like that. And yeah, you do a yeah. class, and then we stay for dinner, and you know, and then there's some yeah. community building there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's so, a great idea. What's it like to live in the Mile High City? Um, it's dry. <laughs> it's a dry heat. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's like sticking your head in the oven. It's a dry yeah, heat. It's a dry heat. Uh, it was, uh, I, I, I liked it. I, I liked Denver a lot, but I, I got real tired of it because it just became too chaotic. It's, uh, I, I don't know what's happened to it. Uh, the, uh, a lot of aggressive drivers there now. 
And I mean, to the point where I just like, I miss Colorado, yeah. miss friends and family, you know, and all that. But I, I don't miss Denver for that reason. It just, it grew too, it's growing too fast. It's always had that problem, growing pains. Yeah. You know, and they, they, they developed stuff uh, probably 10 years ago. Now they were developing a, a, a housing development uh, southeast or southwest uh, corner of town. And somebody forgot to think about putting water out there. And they, they, they got it all laid out and everything went, wait a minute, we need, we need water. And the, and the water department says, you didn't get a permit, you know, so everything sat. And that's, that's been the problem. It's just too much building too fast and they, they don't plan ahead. Yeah. And uh, so, but it's, uh, it's been strange out there recently. I mean, all the water that have been had, uh, right. tons of rain because it, it is very dry. It's a high mountain desert, right? Uh, but not lately. I mean, just crazy stuff happened, but weather has been changing all around us. Yeah. So like yeah. we're in a drought here. And, yeah, yeah. Right. We, we got some rain recently, but we've been in a drought, New Jersey and, and the Philadelphia area and right. most of Pennsylvania. It's dry. Yeah. Well, this so. last kind of rain that came through for about a week, we needed here in Ohio. It was yeah. dry and just, yeah. you know, everything was not surviving much. And yeah, it, it was crazy. So, yeah. 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 And it's, you know, you what everybody wants to be a big city now, you know, I mean, like I know. Columbus and it's like, nah, yeah. you no, know, we don't all have to be big cities. <laughs> For those of us. Well, who there's just, definitely, <laughs> definitely certain advantages of, of yeah. big cities. Sure. And, and I, I will, I will say I, I enjoyed living in the city. I enjoy visiting New York city. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I like the energy of, of big cities, but the, the rest of it, uh, it just got too chaotic. I mean, yeah. I, and I, I did a lot of driving, so I was forced into you know dealing with all this rage, and it's right. and I saw it every day, fist fights in the middle of the highway. You know, it's yeah. like, come yeah. on, guys. Yeah, we all need to touch you. Come on, let's just breathe. Yeah, let's please, just, just breathe. Just, just breathe. <laughs> Can I show you some five frolicking animals? Come on. It's like yeah. right after I shoot this guy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't want to say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Edit that out. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. But no, it's like in New York. I mean, that's why driving was crazy. So any, yeah. I just take public transportation because I just, yeah. I didn't want to deal with the driving, right? Yeah. But I know, yeah, because I mean, there's there's a lot about New York City I miss. Uh huh. But yeah, and I'd go back in a heartbeat, and yeah, and so, but yeah, yeah it's just some of it I, I don't miss a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I met you. Um. The first yeah. time is long. It was a while ago, and the first time I met you, you I took a Wednesday night, at week long push hands thing. You were doing push what? hands. Okay. It was, um, it was in uh, North Carolina when we were in Asheville. Yeah, in Asheville, and um, you were doing a push hands during the week, but you did like a Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I met you. So what got you into Tai Chi and all that? I mean, this is the shirt. Well, the uniform <laughs> good question. Uh, I was studying uh, sea lot, yeah, and uh, it was. <laughs> I told this story at a week long one time, and I, I wrote it. It was a cold, dark night in Denver, you know? and it was. <laughs> we were down at the studio, which was uh, just below the coffee house, and uh, and this fellow had a. Uh, he was an artist, and he opened his studio up for us to practice in, and he was a practitioner also so we were in there doing our thing and and really the door swung open <laughs> and in walked uh i studied with the, the Tours brothers uh, and victor the middle brother was my my guru and uh they had the, the uh second young no he was the youngest and the second youngest was master bill uh, uh willem de Tours. he uh he has his own style of Kung Fu, uh, Kung Lun Pai. And he, he was the uh, sort of the black sheep of the, of the boys. He went to China and studied Qigong and Tai Chi and right. Bagua and Jing Yi and, and just absorbed everything he could, came back to Indonesia and created his own art. And, and these guys were fighting all the time. But anyway, he brings in this lady with him, you know, that he had met and who was a Tai Chi practitioner. And we came in and talked, you know, and of course we're, you know, we're warriors. We're beating each other up. Trees and all that, right? You know, what's this woman doing in our studio? 
<laughs> so she did her little, uh, you know, we yeah. talked about her Tai Chi. I, yeah. I really, I had heard of it. I, did, I had no idea what Tai Chi was. Yeah. None. And she did her form. We watched and we were all thinking, boy, that's slow. You know, why is she moving so slow? <laughs> and then we did our little demonstration for her, you know, and then we all went up the street a block away to Muddy's, and, uh, which I was not involved in at the time. I didn't get involved in that until later. But it was just interesting how the two tied together. Yeah. And, uh, and she and I sat and talked. Her name was Kay. And uh, uh, we talked, and she invited me to her class. And I said, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll come check it out. And I did, you know, and I'm like, well, that's fine, but it's too slow. You know, I, I don't get it. <laughs> Took a little while for it to sink in. <laughs> and uh, But that was my introduction into it. And I kept doing C-Lot until my teacher moved to California. And, and then I started doing Kung Fu Sansu, which uh, is in another Chinese art, of course. But And uh, it, it, I, I liked Sansu a lot because it was very pragmatic. Yeah. And you start learning self-defense day one right. i don't know if you know anything about it or not no. uh, yeah it's uh came out of uh china directly uh, a fellow named jimmy Wu, and he brought it to california and at the time he did nobody had ever heard of kung fu but they knew jujitsu and judo and karate right so he called it jimmy Wu's karate studio for a while i think i'm not sure about that but he created a belt system so we had we had actual a ward oh, geese, yeah, very traditional. But and then as soon as uh, Carradine did Kung Fu on, on TV, right. yeah. it was Kung Fu Sansu. Yeah. But he kept the belt system, huh. which I never really understood, and I don't care about. I, yeah, they they don't mean be like everybody else, probably. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But I guess that he did it, you know, from a business point of view, it it made him a success. Right. So he he was quite successful with it. And it's a good art. Anyway, I, I was doing that, but I kept going back to Tai Chi, kept getting drawn back to it. And then finally, uh, I went full time with Tai Chi in the middle, mid 90s, I think. And yeah. uh, I mean, I had been doing it pretty regular, but I didn't get real serious about it until then. So, yeah. And that's that's how I found it. And she was always uh, Kay was an amazing is an amazing teacher. And uh, she. Uh, she literally had to push her way th with, through all the guys in class and became, uh, uh, I think he's a grandmaster now, Bing Lee, her, uh, his top student, his first student and top student. And, wow. uh, and she's phenomenal. So that's, that got my start in the Yang 108. Yeah. And, and push hands through her. We had done a lot of chi style uh, in, in the, the Indonesian art. Right. And which is a little faster and not quite right. as subtle, you know, and uh, but uh, I like the the push yeah. hands. And, yeah. Uh, so I stayed with that. And uh, that's what got me into it. Yeah. And yeah. And that's what, I, you know, yeah, a lot of what I, I take from you is, is the work in the push hands. And yeah. And it's just and it's about body dynamics and it's about flow and. Yeah, and it's just applied physics. Applied physics. Yeah. I mean, you can you right. I mean, it's it's applied it is. Physics and it's. And it's it's fun, you know. I mean, and when we played, it's been fun, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it should be. Uh, yeah, a lot of people get a little too serious with it, you know. Uh, the, the the chin style that I've been working with, they yeah. the chin chin push hands is another another uh, another style, another, another style, another another world. Yeah, you know, it, it it's rough. You're going down with chin yeah. style, you know, and that part. I don't bounce back like I used to. Yeah. <laughs> My body's old. That's which why I do type yeah, C and not, all this stuff not here. Not anymore, right? Yeah, no. Don't do that. Yeah. In my Tai Chi years now, in I say. We're in our Tai Chi years now. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, because a couple, of, I've, I've gone to some push hands workshops here in Columbus and we start and then we're like, Full at it, and we're throwing each other, and I'm like, oh, this is, I'm not sure I'm into all. Yeah, this, you know, well, it, and that can be part of it. Not, yeah. not to not to take anything away from, like I say, with the chin style. That, I mean, and again, it's applied physics with them also. Right. It's just they they go at it a little more serious. They yeah. they 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 apply the martial art to it, and they yeah. take you down. Yeah. So it's a little rough on the knees and the back and stuff. So uh, I don't I don't play in that world anymore. Yeah, and and I think it's it's. For me, it's been easier to learn. A little softer push hands gives me a chance to learn. I'm not just trying to not get. Yeah, hurt. that's right. Which that's is right. not 
always a learning environment for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out, I want to play and figure this thing out and yeah. this little piece right here and yeah, yeah, and work on that. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's um and that's fun. And, and yeah, and, I, and even in when we went to Zoom and you know, I still go back to your to your solo push hand stuff that we did, you know. Really? With the, yeah, I do. And ball on the wall, and I do some of the sea lot, the sea lot stuff we were doing. And oh yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool stuff you came up. With. I forgot I showed that. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that we did? Yeah, oh, yeah, I do now. Thank you. You did that exercise, and that was it's like oh yeah, that's pretty cool. You know yeah, and for me the push hands, it's you know it's the give and take of of the connection between me and you. You know it's. Right. And that's and that's fun. It could it can be fun. I think it absolutely. And it to me, it uh, at, for a while I was trying to develop a, and I still might try to a, a little corporate program yeah. of bringing it to to corporations and sort of a team building yeah. spirit. You know, because it, it is negotiation, and that's what we're always doing at work in life is negotiating. One hundred percent. So yeah. the and the first rule of push hands is to listen. And that's the biggest thing, you know, with people uh, trying to get them to listen. Yeah. You're a good listener. Uh, I've noticed that about you. You're a good oh, listener. You. Well, yeah, you are. And I, I know that comes with your your career and your your background. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes that. Everything that you, you have done that you do uh, takes yeah. a good listener. But, that, I mean, that, you know, listen, uh, yield, redirect, and issue, you know. Yeah. And uh, isn't that what life brings at us and that we need to practice more. Yeah. But the listening part is is the hardest. The hardest thing I get people to do is letting go. Uh, and especially in push hands. Trying to, I, the, the fellow I was working with two weeks ago, uh, and I think you've done this exercise where you just stand, let me pick up your arm. Yeah. You know, people resist that. And, and he, <laughs> he thought, oh, I, I'm relaxed. I said, no, Gary, you're not. <laughs> you're relaxed. I remember. <laughs> he says, you're right. I'm not. He was, yeah. he was very nice about it. Yeah. And, and finally, I got him to let go, you know, and because the arm is very heavy when, you, when you're just trying to pick it up. Yeah. But you can, as soon as you touch it, you, you know whether or not somebody's trying to assist you uh, in, in, in lifting it arm. But I recommend that for everybody. Just, yeah. just try it with somebody. Try it, you know, but that letting go is, yeah. is huge. It, it's, and it's, because you know you you've done that with me, and it's like you know yeah. you say relax. I'm like, well, see who I am, relax. No, you're not. I'm like, oh, relax you more. Yeah, you know. And Re then you relax get there, harder. All oh, this is what relaxation is. Yeah. This is yeah. So stop yeah. calling what you were doing relaxation. Yeah. You know? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I developed this. I developed a. It's like a workshop. I'm talking to the corporate world. It's mindful conversation, and mm -hmm. I go back to basic conversation being you know, this is Tai Chi. It's accepting, redirecting, you know, yeah. and talking about sure. listen first. You gotta sure gotta listen. I gotta then I gotta hear, but then I have to respond to the energy you give me. I can't just say something that has nothing connected to what you said to me. That's yeah. And that's that's push hands. That's tight. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very I, good. I, oh, I look forward to seeing your corporate program. I'll I'll come well I, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> At this age of my life, I in your Tai Chi. I'm a something. lot of talk. Yeah, I, I come, you know, I come listen to you. You know that. <laughs> um, and I think the other thing that I that I take from you learning is um is the martial aspect of Tai Chi, which I think here in the West it's about health and wellness, but yeah, it's some you know, I mean, that tends to be the aspect of Tai Chi that gets lifted up. But it is a martial art, and it I, is a martial art. Yeah, and you can, yeah, and your martial arts background and and mine as well. And I always yeah. enjoy. I think, well, we, you know, I was doing fan. I taught fan class last Saturday, and and it's like, well, this move, it's it's a throw, it's a throw, and they're like, what? I'm like, what? Yeah. And they're <laughs> like, it's a throw. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. that's why you step the way you step, and. And people, and it opens, exactly. and you know, even if you're never going to throw somebody, right, it it's, opens your mind to create opens the mind. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that's what's the you know, and so a lot of times this martial aspect, and we talk about imaging and yeah. seeing things be that's not really in front of you, but is, and mm -hmm. that that's when Tai Chi gets. I for me, that's when Tai Chi gets fun when it's you get past sure. 
the movement stuff and sure yeah i, I have a one student here in, in in southampton right now and he went through all the rec centers here and uh he had had a martial art background taekwondo and different things and uh when he was a younger man and now he, and he got to, and he he got interested in Tai Chi. So he kept trying to find a teacher here yeah. and he finally found me. Uh, let's see, it'll be, it'll be a year at, uh, this September. I think we started together right after my back surgery and I, I hadn't done anything in six months, nothing, right. you know, so I was ready to get back into it. And this guy happened to call me and, uh, and he knew there was more to it than what the people at direct the centers, they, cause they didn't know. Right. And it was like, oh, it's just the way we do it. You know, well, why do you why? Why? You, what is the single whip thing? Well, you know, and they couldn't give him an answer. And right. it's OK. I mean, they're, they're there. They serve a purpose for health reasons. But right. he was happy to find me that I had enough knowledge to show him and get him to understand what the postures were about, you know, and what they could be applied to. So I'm having fun with him. Because he's he's an open book with all this stuff. He he really and and again we're not looking to get into a, a, a fight uh, right. anywhere or, or ever use it or ever throw somebody like you mentioned a while ago. But uh, he he sees now he understands what it was about as a martial art, what yeah. it what it can do, what it, what the possibilities are. So yeah. it's nice to to work with somebody yeah. that's that accepting to uh, yeah. to the ideas. So you're you are you still playing with the old. Uh the chin and kind of little yeah more i backed off of the i the, there's two forms in the chin uh elu and erlu and uh, second and first form and second form is cannon fist a lot of popping and stuff and i decided you know i think i'm done with that you know but i'm I'm still working on the first form good and uh i, I like it i like it a lot it's yeah yeah chin chin style practical method uh, taught by uh i think he's grandmaster now uh chin Zhanghua. And uh, he's excellent teacher, excellent, and so accessible. Uh, just fascinating to to watch him work a uh, group. I've been to two of his workshops in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Yeah, and uh, both of them were just just incredible. Well, the fireworks has already started. Just pop, uh -huh. pop. <laughs> <laughs> at 3 30 on the front. yeah right well we had some last night too. well yeah they, they get an early start right mm -hmm. they want to get a jump on the on the competition a, this is philly remember it's like <laughs> well <laughs> yeah we don't go to philly, philly. <laughs> we're in a, we're in bucks county <laughs> we stay away from philly, philly. I mean, it's it's, it's not fireworks it's gunfire in philly <laughs> so which i hate i hate to say that because yeah. philly's a a nice There's so town. much history. It, it could be a wonderful town, but yeah. boy, lately it's just oh. gang war. I know I mean, it's, it's awful. So anyway. yeah, I and mean, we see that here too. And it's just you know what's yeah, I don't know. And, it, and you just it, and it's about communication. I really think a lot of it. It's just we we have lost the art of being able to communicate and being able to work out things. Yeah, it's just we we we, we react to things rather than l listening. And, and thinking about it and then con coming up with a conclusion or reaction. It, it's just reaction. Right. Oh, you cut in front of me? Just I'll just shoot. Wait. I mean, and not even yeah. thoughtful. It's just, yeah. I'm just going to no. go do whatever I want to do. And that's right. You talk about arguing, you know, drivers arguing on the freeway. And it's like, oh, yeah. Is this, <laughs> is this really necessary? Is this necessary? Because now you're blocking it. Now I got to yeah. go out and argue with you. Now this is it. <laughs> right. Now I got, I got a sunburn now because yeah. I'm standing on the pavement. Arguing uh, with your fool, you know. No kidding. I, I know. Uh, bad, bad. So we talk about mindfulness and banging. Um, you are a drummer. Is there yes. Drummer here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what got you into drumming, man? Well, I always wanted to be a drummer. And back in grade school, uh, fifth grade, I wanted to be, join the band. Okay. The the the, the uh, preschool school band, band or yeah. well, not preschool, but yeah, yeah. element, yeah, Elementary the school. junior band. Yeah. And they already had enough drummers, so they stuck a trumpet in my hand. Yeah. I went, "What's this?" <laughs> so I tried to play trumpet. Yeah. You know, and that didn't go too well because I still wanted to be a drummer. Be drummer. Yeah. So that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> so fast forward to about nineteen, I think it was around nineteen eighty six. I decided I'm going to learn how to play drums. Yeah. So I was uh, recovering from a whiplash 
couldn't work. So I bought a cheap set of drums and I put myself in a room in my basement with a stereo and I started playing. And I thought, I just want to get good enough someday to go out and sit in at a jam session yeah. and not get kicked off stage. Well, I, I did that and went beyond that. Played in a whole bunch of bands, uh, been on a whole bunch of, I've been in recording studio, oh, probably half a dozen times. So I'm out there somewhere on somebody's music. On somebody's music, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of them were demo demo CDs and stuff so we could promote ourselves to get more gigs. Okay, you know? yeah. But I, I've just always had that uh, good sense of rhythm. And uh, my teacher, Kay, we were, I was talking to her one day about why can't people get this idea of brush knee? You know, <laughs> She says, Merle, nobody ever had to tell you where one is in the music, right? I went. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. people get it and some don't. Some okay. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No sense. Never mind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> she always cleared things up for yeah. me, you know. <laughs> but I, I just, uh, I, I love it. Uh, it, uh, it really uh, uh, does, does something for me. It really uh, transforms me. I don't get to play enough anymore. I'm yeah. about ready to set the drums up again here and, and drive Sandy crazy. Uh, <laughs> so... We're about to go to that, but I, I I recently did get to play up at uh, a place called the Deerhead Inn, up in uh, the Poconos yeah. uh, at uh, Delaware Water Gap is the name of the town yeah. uh, area, and it's an area too. And uh, it's the oldest running, continuously running jazz club in America. Wow. And uh, I had heard about it a long time ago from a CD I, I bought, uh, Keith Jarrett, and he worked there as a busboy, then became a famous jazz piano player so he went back there and did a recording and that that made that place even more famous yeah so on thursday nights they have a jam session after two times i was telling sandy about it and she said oh let's just stop hour in. and a half away yeah, let's right, just drop up there oh okay so we did and went up there twice and uh and then finally got up enough nerve to go sit in one night and i got to play two songs and didn't get kicked off stage so nice I hadn't played in probably four years. Oh wow! You know, I hadn't touched them, and uh, but it's it's still in there. You know, yeah. It's, I'm always tapping. People can always find yeah. me. They, oh, that's more all over there, banging, keep, on, keep something. It, yeah, banging yeah. on something. So mostly jazz. Yeah, I, I did some blues. I've done some country. Yeah. I worked in a country band. Last band I worked in in Denver was country band, just a trio, and uh, that's what I prefer is trio work. My favorite is piano, bass, drums, um, and playing jazz. Yeah, jazz is my favorite. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, all forms of it. I mean, most people play standard, uh, the standards in jazz, and, yeah. uh, which are just the traditional songs that everybody knows. Oh, yeah. and, and when you go sit in somewhere, you better know them, <laughs> or they because uh, that's what we're playing. That's right. That's what we're playing. <laughs> but I, I also like a, a little bit more avant-garde, a uh, little bit more progressive. Yeah. And but most people don't like to play that stuff. But I, I'm self-taught. I had a lot of friends that were drummers in Denver that would give me little mini lessons. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? You know, so I got a lot of tips from people, but the rest of it just came, just, just play, just, playing. just do it. You know? The five-year-old kid in you. Yeah. No, whatever. Yeah, no, the there you go. Kid, the, whatever. The, the five, yeah. The, yeah, the 10 year old. Kid. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it was. Yeah, thank you. I was, going, I was going to say, your parents got you a drum kit for Christmas. No, sure. <laughs> no, no, they got you a trump. No, a trumpet. Yeah, it was it. Yeah, and that trumpet sat in the attic for I don't know how many how years. Many? And finally, my nephew got it, and, oh, uh, okay. and he played. He played in the band and yeah. marching band in high school, so it went to good use. Yeah, see, we could. Uh, I'll have to learn some jazz on my bagpipes, and we'll get together. I saw somebody doing that. Did I? Did I? See yeah, you sent me a video. Remember? I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. The female. Remember that? She that was, was crazy. crazy. She was and, crazy. She was crazy, man. Awesome. She was on it. It's the first time I had heard that. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it was good. I've seen some. All right, I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to yeah. hold you to it. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to play because I've seen some of her stuff before. She's come up on, you know. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. She's There's some there's some pipers out there right now that are just yeah. doing some awesome, awesome That's cool. Stuff, That's you know, cool. and it's just, yeah, transcends, you know, military bagpipe music. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's some good stuff going on out there. There really is. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll, well, learn, I, I'll pull up some jazz stuff, yeah. Yeah, I have a friend in Denver that plays the uh, Urhu, the little string box. Yeah, box uh, string, yeah. 
he had the uh, Chinese instrument, and he plays. He's a jazz musician. He's a bass player. Yeah, and he he he's really something with this thing. Really something. He brought it to a gig one night. I went, really, Eric? He said, yeah. I said, cool. And it, he made it sound good. Yeah, so, it's like we'll see what it uh, sounds okay. like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome experience. Yeah, I'm going to wheel up with my bagpipes, and they're going to. Yeah. Say, How about you go sit down in the audience? <laughs> yeah. We'll call you. <laughs> yeah. I, well, and then another, you know, this is uh, this is on the next list, but we have uh -huh. a house is a dish, a dish redo. And, and yeah. I've seen some people play some some pretty cool stuff on the dish. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's like, oh, yeah. and it's kind of the same thing. It's a circular breath instrument. And so it's similar to the bagpipes. So, yeah. Did, it, uh, did you meet uh, Dr. Stephanie Taylor? When she was active with Dr. Lamb, uh -huh. uh, and she was uh, she lives in the Monterey area, California. Okay. She was a master trainer with Dr. Okay. Lamb, uh, early one of the early ones with Dan okay. Jones and uh, that that whole group. She's a didge player. Nice. Didn't know didn't know she was a didge player. We lost a master trainer uh, that was from uh, was it New Zealand or uh, or Australia? I can't remember. Lovely lady got killed in a car accident. They did a tribute to her at the next. Week long. week long yeah and two of the ladies got up that were from australia that knew her you know really well they were all good friends and, and they did a demonstration and and stephanie played the didge in the background as they were doing tai chi for her this is i mean everybody was just sobbing oh my and oh it was something else but had no idea here's little stephanie taylor out there with a didge with a didge <laughs> you know just amazing you just never know what treats people can present to you, you know, yeah. the, the talents that are out there. So it's yeah. awesome. We were, I was at, uh, I was in uh, Edinburgh one time and it was the, of course, the tattoo was going in the fringe and all that, you know, with the, and there was a guy, here he is, he's just wailing on a dish, man. And I'm yeah. like, that's, that is cool. I And I'm like, you know, and he's like, yeah, if you play the, it's like, you play the pipes, you just got to figure out the embouchure and you're good, you know, and he's yeah. like, you're, you know, he's like, yeah. Well, now they, they do the circular breathing, circular right? Breathing, yeah. Do you do that too? I do, no, we get the bag is your circular. So you're breathing that's your... the bag and breathe and squeeze. So it's oh, that's right. The bag, the bag puts the air in. Right. That's right. Yeah. But I it's uh, kind of pretty close. You get pretty yeah. close to it. Yeah. Wow. But it's. Uh, I don't know how they do that circular breathing. That I, just. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> like, that's cool. And I'll stand here and <laughs> I'll throw money into yeah. it. You know, but that's about it. <laughs> ah, so yeah, last couple of questions. So, yeah, Earth and Cup, right? And I think I so Earth for us is like grounding and being grounded. Uh, what grounds you? Um, I think one thing is doing nice things for people. Yeah, and and seeing people that I love smile, and uh, yeah, and and feeling good about themselves. And, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a service person, so I like doing things for people. So whatever I can do, and uh, that that really uh, that that really grounds me. I mean, Tai Chi and Qigong, physically, yeah, but emotionally, I think uh, just uh, loving people. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you've given me tons of gifts. I, you know, I tell you that all the time. Everybody, well, you know, same, yeah. same to you, sir. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. You know, I absolutely. Mean, my, Thank my, you. My, yeah, my favorite uh, qigong right now is still, you know, frolicking animals. So I, yeah, love that. Mine, it's, mine too. I, I, I love the animals. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's cool stuff, and yeah, yeah. You know, you've given me thousands of gifts, and then um, yeah, so then on the cup side of it, it's this, you know, the notion of that we are a cup and we fill it and empty it and all that. And so you uh -huh. have to empty it to fill it. So what, <laughs> what fills your cup and how do you empty your cup to be filled again? What fills it is a nap. <laughs> <laughs> At this age, a good nap. In my Tai Chi years, a good yeah. nap is always. Absolutely. Cause it, the, the cup just gets emptied really quick anymore. Yeah. But I, I don't mean to be silly, but I, I was thinking about this before yeah. you. Yeah. Because you said that would be a question. So yeah. I thought, you know, it, it's, I don't mean to make a joke about it, but it's very true. <laughs> I have to re, re I'm a, yeah. when I was a kid, don't yeah. ask me to take a nap. I'm going to miss something, you know, I would yeah. never take, but now I look forward to it. It does regenerate. But other than that, I, I think uh, just being with people that 
I like being with, you know, that fills my cup. Uh, teaching fills my cup. Uh, that also empties your cup yeah. really quickly, as you well know. Right. I mean, that can just take it all out of you. And then you have to <laughs> ground again and, yeah. and, and reinvent and regenerate and all that and, and to get it filled back up. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it was, you know, talk about naps. I'm a firm believer. It was funny. Of course, I've been at camp all week, you know, with uh -huh. 82 kids. And you look good. Young, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a young advisor. And, you know, like on Wednesday morning, he's like dragging because it's been since like, you know, three o'clock Sunday afternoon and go, go, go. And I'm like, are you napping? He's like, <laughs> like, what? I'm like, son, you need to learn to nap. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. You need to go lay down for about an hour and yep. figure, out, figure out where in the day you can lay down and go. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yesterday as we were leaving, it was like, I, he says the one thing, because we were kind of just chatting about what we got from different people. And he's like, I learned to take naps. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. That's right. Have you ever learned anything from me? Learn to take a nap. Because Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good advice. Good advice. Well, this has been fun. I told you it'd be fun. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. Always fun with you, Mike. Pause. We never had to push pause. Or That's right. You're always fun. Yeah. So I've, um, en I've enjoyed our friendship, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I've enjoyed our and, friendship, uh, too. And I've absolutely. enjoyed, like I said, you've given me thousands of gifts. And I, I appreciate getting together. And Well, thank you. Yeah. And, and, and right back at you, man. You're, you're, you're a good guy. And I always enjoy your company. always enjoy working with you. And, yeah. If uh, yeah. people wanted to find out about you, is uh, you still got the website up? or uh, Kind of. I don't do much with it. But okay. yeah, ancientharmonytaichi.com. Uh, I think I just paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Pay, paid endorsement there. Uh, I'll pay you later, Mike. I'll pay you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you another T-shirt. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. I'd like the long sleeve this time, but that's all right. Okay. Oh. I, I don't have any. I know. So you told so, me that. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks for wearing the shirt, though. Yeah. But yeah. Th thanks. Thanks for asking me, and I, I feel honored that you yeah, asked I me to be part of this. It. And then, yeah, and then uh, I, you know, I, I just enjoy, and it's been a while since we've got to yeah. do this. You know, been a long while since we've been actually in the same. Uh, I know. So we, we know. need to figure that out and have to maybe I have to make a a uh, a week long to you know the the outer Philadelphia area. Okay. <laughs> Do it. We'll take care of you. We'll we'll take care of you. We won't let you we won't right. let you get get lost well, too. But. but I but I appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been good catching up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to push the push the stop button as I promised you I would.